In this video, we will together choose the best bow under $100. For this one, we teamed up with Alibo and together we choose four bows we think that are maybe one of the best bows on the market. We have there something from almost every place in Asia. Something Turkish, something Mongolian, something Chinese, something Tibetan. So let's check it out. Which one of these four bows is the best under $100. Interesting fact is that I know only this one. It's my favorite Turkish fiberglass bow from Alibo. But these three bows are a complete mystery for me. I have no idea what to expect. So you will be there with me from my very first shot with these bows and you will get my honest, honest feelings and of course honest review. Let's shoot in this beautiful snowy garden with snowing and sun and everything that means a beautiful winter, at least in the middle of Europe. Let's go. Let me start with the one I know the most. So I have some kind of base level to, let's say, judge, measure, review other bows. This is Turkish bow by Alibo. This bow costs $70. It's fiberglass, so it means that it's super durable. It's strength all the time I have it. It's more than two, maybe three years that it's strength. It didn't lose anything from its power and strength, so it's amazing. And I know this bow like <laughs> the tip of my shoe. I exactly know what is it, how it works, how it feels. I love this one. It's so simple, so easy. 35 pounder great short amazing bow for running archery for shooting from a horse or just just stationary shooting like this one very cool love it right now i have a base level what is normal for me what is my standard in terms of fiberglass bows and let's try others this is tibet style bow queen guy queen high i i'm sorry i don't know pronunciation of these beautiful words so sorry but that's it there are two versions longer 130 centimeters and shorter 120 centimeters this one is of course shorter because i like shorter bows so it looks like this and the draw length of the shorter version is 31 inches it means that this arrow the tip of this arrow should be somewhere here and it's the optimal draw length whoa expect this feeling interesting very interesting the bow feels very sturdy very rugged not when I draw, it feels pretty light, it's easy, but when you release it, big hand, big hand shock, this is one thing, and the second thing, it feels strong, you feel that you have the power in your hand. It's not super comfortable release, I must say, but aiming is pretty solid, like, I wouldn't like to stand there would be dead in a second. And another important information, this is 40 pound bow. I wanted something stronger to test out. My first impression is pretty nice. It's more comfortable than the Mongolian fiberglass bow from Alibo I tested out earlier. And also not that comfortable as the Turkish bow. Of course, because it's longer and a little stronger, so the vibrations are there. This is the disadvantage of fiberglass, of course. Let me test others. This is Kayuan bow and it has this distinctive special looking siax. Uh, somebody believed that they used it to grab the arrows from the ground. Um, maybe a different style of arrows than this or maybe a different technique to do it. It's 116 centimeters long string. It's 40 pound bow and it has this beautiful shape, this beautiful look. I'm super curious about it because when I made the photos of it, it really looked nice. So, yes, I thought so. I thought that it will be just like this. Oh my goodness! $100, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah! Very smooth, very friendly. If I consider, if I consider that this bow is fiberglass, it doesn't feel like it. Yes, it's a little heavier, of course, it's not that light, but it's very comfortable in a hand. Much more comfortable than the Tibetan bow. Let me check the last one we have there, the Mongolian one. 
This blue beauty is Mongolian Chinggis Hambo and uh, it's 120 centimeters long. One of my favorite lengths. I like it shorter, but 120 is still good. And it's again 40 pounder. The maximal draw length is 32, but I have only 31 inch long arrows today. So we will test it out just like this. But also very nice shape, typical, very long CX. So let me check it out, how it feels. Mmm, strong sound. Not that accurate, but pretty comfortable. Oh, I, th I think I figured it out a little, little bit. Yeah, very good one. I like the sound. It's like it very much. Almost no hand shock, fiberglass bow, pretty long, no hand shock, very good. Well, after the first round, I must say that the Mongolian Chinggis Khan and the red one, the Kai one, are very good surprise. I really liked it. It feels much better than for $100. The bow that little disappointed me is the Tibetan one. It's nothing super special I would really like but let's see it in more tests maybe it will surprise me in something else but of course the Turkish one shortest one is something I really like I know it very well so comparing bows I know for two minutes with a bow I have for three years it's kind of you know not fair but in this video we want to choose one that is the best under $100 and I feel that it will be very tough so Let's go for walking and shooting test. Here we go with the Turkish fiberglass. I know the most. It's a bow I test out many new things, ways, techniques. I want to show you in video. So I know what to expect from this one. So let's make some walking and shooting test. I just know what to expect from this, how to handle that. It's very simple, but very friendly bow. For $70, no brainer if you want something short. Absolutely the best choice I have ever tested under $100 in terms of Turkish bows. So let's see what the others can do. And here we go with the Tibetan bow. So let's go. Well, in a movement are many things lost. You know, all the bad feelings that it shakes, it vibrates, it's a little heavy. When you move, many of these things are lost because you don't have a brain capacity, I believe, to think about it because you need to focus on so many things. The move, loading, you just don't really care that much about it's shaking a little. So, well, surprise in a movement. Not bad at all. Now Kaiwan is in pretty hot position because in the first shooting there were really positive emotions. So right now high expectations. So let's go. Okay, succeeded. He did it. Feels good, feels very solid. Good aiming, good feeling in a hand. For $100, just wow. Wow. Number four, Mongolian Chinggis Khan. Show me what you got. The difference between Mongolian bow and the Kaiwan is, is just the feeling. There is nothing I can say that this bow does better or worse than the Kaiwan. They are pretty similar in so many things. I think that more tests will show us which one is the better. The only struggle I have with this shape of a bow is how to hold the arrows. I have many techniques, of course. First is that I hold the arrows in my arrow hand, in my draw hand, and I just shoot like this, yeah? The other one is my Wolverine style, 
that I hold arrows like this. But there's a first problem. This, let's say B-shaped bow, is not a good solution for this because you see the arrows are mixing together because the shape of the handle makes it like this. So it's all mixed in one group. It's not the best solution for this bow, not in the movement. So if you want to shoot with Mongolian, Kaiwan or the Tibetia, which are pretty much very similar in terms of grip, um, you need to have a quiver or you need to hold your arrows in your arrow hand because try to hold the arrows somewhere on the bow will not work for you. It will not be super comfortable. So it's the category where the Turkish bow, because it has this D shape, wins because more options to hold the arrows. And right now sprint and shooting is one of the hardest things to do to aim while you are in a full sprint. So I will be probably somewhere there and I will shoot at this target while I'm in full sprint. So one bow, one arrow is good enough. And let's go, Turkish. Now Tibetan. Now Kaiwan. And last but not least, Mongolian Chinggis Khan. And right now I will do a blindfold test. So my beloved neighbor will hand me one of the bows. I will hold it by the grip, so I don't know what it is. We'll take the arrow and I will shoot blindfolded. And it will be up to me to find out which bow is which and which feels the best. Because when my visual input from the bow and the outer world will be shut down, all other senses will be much stronger. So maybe we can derive something important and interesting from this. So I really see nothing and my eyes are closed too so I have no idea what's going on so first bow okay fine fine it feels a little bit like Mongolian or uh, Tibetan I have no idea what it is uh, it feels nice it feels nice, no hand shock, so I think that this one is Mongolian. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, nice, good. This feels like Kaiwan or Mongolian or Tibetan. One of the three, because, yeah, just the grip can help me. Ah, definitely Tibetan. Huge hand shock, not so comfortable, feels rugged and big. Okay, okay. This one is small and light. Definitely Turkish, absolutely. Small, light, very comfortable bow. And the last one. As where are the arrows there? I hit something. So some trefil. Okay, this feels very similar in between uh, the Kaiwan and the Chinggis Khan, the Mongolian. Very close to each other, these two bows, even without my sight. It feels very, very much, very pretty much the same. Um, funny thing happened. I made the end of the video yesterday outside and I gave you my own preference, which bow was better, which bow was worse and why. And then in the computer, I found out that the video is completely out of focus. So there's big blurry thing with audio. So I will make it again, but I believe even better. My number four is this bow. It's the Tibetan Quingai. Still don't know the pronunciation, I'm sorry. And the reasons are very simple. The loading phase is smooth, it's nice. But with a release, big hand shock, this sturdy, heavy feeling. It's a powerful, good bow. It's nice. But in comparison to other bows of this collection, 
nothing super special, but a huge big but. This bow costs only $80. I tested many, many cheap bows and this is one of the best cheap bows I have tested. So for $80, still very, very solid choice. So if you like the shape, if you like these beautiful sexy cradles up there, buy it. You will like it. It's good. It's good. In this price range, very good. And there is a second place. Well, Charlie, maybe you forget about the third place. I didn't. The second place is split between these two bows. I like them very much. This is a little longer, 120 centimeters. This is 116. So I like a shorter the better for me, basically. But this bow, if we talk about fiberglass, under $100, Mongolian bow, it's an amazing choice. It's still pretty light, shoots very nice, and the draw length up to 32 inches can be something that many archers in this price range would love, totally love. This bow has only 31 inch draw length recommended, and for me personally, it's good enough. I shoot mostly from 28, 29 or something when I run, jump and so on, so I don't need more. I have no use for it. If I need to choose one that I would keep in the stranded island, I would choose this one, Kaiwan. But maybe just because it's a red color and uh, I like red more than blue, maybe that's the only, only reason. And the winner is Turkish. The cheapest bow I have ever shot in my life. $70 bow. 70, 70, really. Amazing for running archery for many reasons. It's short. When I do katra, it doesn't hit my armpit. And also, it has this D shape. So I can hold multiple arrows in a multiple ways. For example, have it in my bow hand too. With the other bows, as we discussed, it's not pretty much possible and good quality. My Thoughts are that if you want to start with traditional archery, if you want to start with running archery, if you want to have something from this field, definitely go for this one. You will enjoy it for long range shooting, for standstill shooting. You will love it from a horse. I would believe, I'm scared of horses, so I don't know, but I believe that. You will like it for running archery. You will like it for whatever type of archery you want to do in terms of traditional archery, of course because it's just an amazing bow. Also, when I thought that I will not continue with archery because I had this burn down syndrome like one and a half or two years ago, I kept only two bows. My Assyrian bow from Bulgar Archery, my first proper traditional bow I love from the laminated ones and this one. I had many, many amazing bows from Malibu, many amazing bows from Navalny, Grozer, uh, Schimeister, many others, all of them are gone. I, I gave to my friends, I sold them and I kept this and the Assyrian one. So if you have any questions about these bows or any other bows, leave them down in the comments below. I will reply as soon and as best as I can, okay? And I'm looking forward to see you next time because we have there one super special thing I really want to review for a long time that was in the Alibo box that came in and well, I think that it will be something super special. So. I'm looking forward to see you next time. Bye.